Good morning, everybody. Welcome again to a catechist. My name is Dr. Nick Slayman. I'm an intensivist at the DuPont Hospital for Children in Wilmington, Delaware. Today's tutorial is going to be short, but it's going to be a fun one. So this is going to address a common call from the nursing staff or respiratory staff to the resident or fellow in the ICU. And what that is, is we have Ryan, our pediatric patient, who has undergone respiratory failure and has been intubated with an endotracheal tube. He's sedated, could be paralyzed as well. But the problem is he's desaturated. The nurses are calling you because his oxygen saturation, as you can see on the monitor, is 87%. So in pediatric ICU, you have to have a quick way of kind of troubleshooting desaturation. And the mnemonic we teach people is called DOPE. So we say, don't be a DOPE when the patient desaturates. Go through your DOPE mnemonic. And what DOPE stands for is that the endotracheal tube could be D, displaced. It could be O, obstructed. There could be P, a pneumothorax. Or E, there could be equipment failure. So let's go through each of those steps real quick and make sure that we understand what we're talking about. So for D, could the tube be displaced? And that could mean two things. The endotracheal tube could be completely out of the trachea and be in the back of the throat somewhere, and that's why the patient's starting to desaturate. Or it could be displaced. It could be too deep. Maybe it got pushed in and is now on the right main stem bronchus, and he's only oxygenating with one lung instead of two. So to troubleshoot a displaced tube, there's a couple things you could do. You can listen. Listen to the chest, listen for breath sounds. See if there's chest rise, so inspect and auscultate. Are the breath sounds equal or are they louder on the right? That's one way. Looking at the tube, inspecting the tube for vapor. Is vapor going up and down in the tube? That's a good sign that it's probably still in the trachea. And then end tidal CO2. So again, you could get one of your colometric end tidal monitors, pop that on the end of the tube, Make sure you get purple to yellow. Yellow means yes. Or most of our intubated patients are going to have an electronic end title, and it will be displayed on the monitor. It's a square waveform, so it comes up, over, and down with every exhaled breath. You don't see any end title. You don't hear anything. You don't see any vapor. You don't see chest rise. You're in probably some trouble and your endotracheal tube is probably no longer in. Last step before I would just say go ahead and yank it out, take them off the ventilator, hook them up to the bag so we could detach our mask from our Ambu bag or we could get our Mapleson bag, plug it right in, give bag breaths ourselves. So again, we're bagging the patient, but we're looking for chest rise, we're listening and auscultating or having an assistant do that, we're looking for vapor. So the tube could be de-displaced. Could the tube be obstructed? So maybe it's in perfect position, but you don't see anything, you don't hear anything, there's no vapor and they're desaturating. Well, again, before we rip that tube out, maybe we should see if the tube's obstructed by suctioning it. Sometimes if there's airway bleeding, you can get a blood clot in the tube, completely obstruct the tube, or more likely in pediatrics, especially with bronchiolitis, there's a lot of mucus production. Mucus can clog up that tube and actually get pretty hard. So taking the patient off the ventilator, getting a flexible suction, large caliber as will fit in the ET tube, passing it down the tube, making sure it goes through the end of the tube. Maybe you can even elicit a cough from the patient if they're sedated but not paralyzed. That's a good way to find out if the tube is obstructed. You also want to inspect the mouth. Sometimes the patient's not sedated enough and they're biting down on the tube, obstructing it with their teeth. In that case, sometimes we'll take an oral airway and put that in the mouth as a bite box so they can bite down on that but they can't bite down on the ET. So that's the O for obstruction. Pneumothorax is a tougher one to figure out sometimes. So you could listen and let's say you hear breath sounds on the right but none on the left. That could be a right main stem intubation and the tube is in great position other than it's too deep but he's not extubated or there's no breath sounds on the left because maybe he has a pneumothorax on the left. So sometimes that's hard to sort out. But your first step would be to inspect, see if you have asymmetric chest rise, listen, see if you hear breath sounds on one side but not the other. Third step would be get an x-ray. As fast as you can, get a radiograph and see if there's a large pneumothorax. In a small infant, 
probably wouldn't work in Ryan size, but in a small infant, you can get a powerful flashlight. Put that lit underneath the chest on each side. If light comes through, that's likely a pneumothorax because light goes through the air. If the lungs fully expanded and the tissue of the lung is up and fully inflated, that's going to block some of that light. But that, again, only works in really small babies, usually micropremies, preemies, and infants. In a guy his size, to transilluminate his chest would be a little bit harder. And then finally, E. Do I have some equipment failure? Is he desaturating not because of the tube, not because of mucus and obstruction, not because of a pneumothorax, but maybe the ventilator's failing? And the way to get that taken out of the system is take your bag, hook it up to oxygen, detach the patient from the ventilator, bag the patient yourself. If you have equal chest rise, equal auscultation, saturations come right up, then you know that the tube was uh, in good position all along, and this was an equipment failure. So again, the patient in the ICU who's desaturating, especially intubated, or patients with a tracheostomy tube, or even patients with BiPAP, you can use some of these things to think about. They won't have a breathing tube, but you can think about pneumothorax and equipment failure. Maybe your BiPAP's failing. But patients with artificial airways who are dependent on mechanical ventilation, if they are desaturating, don't be a dope. Go through your dope mnemonic. So again, thanks for joining us here in Acaticus, and we'll see you next time.